What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about another one of those operations I have to do or did on my MacBook Pro. It is all about repasting the CPU and GPU for better performance. Now when I started considering this, my computer felt like it is getting slower and slower. Now the question always is, am I throwing more work at the computer? Are the tasks getting more complicated and that way the computer feels slower? Or is it actually the performance of the computer dropping, for example, because of the heat conducting paste between the cooling segment and the CPU and the GPU, and there just being too much heat for the CPU to handle, and thus that whole process then throttles down the CPU and GPU for better life, so that it doesn't get so hot and instead just gets a little bit slower. Now, whenever I thought about this process, I was like, I don't really want to do this, especially after looking into how I would actually have to handle this with the MacBook Pro 2016-17 model. And there, the whole process includes that you have to literally take out the whole motherboard, which has everything on it, and take that out, unscrew four screws so that you can actually take off the heatsink module. Now I am going to talk about the whole process. However, this video specifically is not going to be a teardown guide. I will, however, have links in the description below to a video that helped me do the whole process and also the article that I already used for the process of exchanging my battery in this computer because there it also describes how to take out the whole motherboard and that is really detailed and nicely done with photos including markings of every screw and type of screw so that you can actually find those again in case you get something mixed up. Now again, I always have tremendous respect before going into one of these operations because it means that potentially if you do something wrong or something goes wrong, your computer could completely be destroyed and no longer usable, or at least in a state where you actually have to give it to someone who knows what they're doing better than myself or yourself. So it's always something that is like, it feels like it's high risk, even though I know I can be extremely careful and do everything correctly, it still is like a high pressure situation. Now this is especially true for myself because around 12 years old, I was playing around with a bunch of old computers I basically found at the scrapyard and it never had problems with those. Then at some point I started playing around with my own computer, undoing the heatsink of the CPU, trying to do something there. I don't even remember what it was exactly, but at the end of the day, I did not repaste that CPU and on prior computers it never was necessary because apparently those didn't go as warm. Now my computer at the time, uh, it did go too warm without the paste, without the cooling agent or cooling system properly built into. And so the whole CPU got fried and I actually had to get a new one. So I never really wanted to touch CPUs with that whole concept again. Now, I did kind of warm up to the idea because I also had to change out my speakers on this particular MacBook Pro. And so I thought to myself, might as well do that because I do want to know if it actually would help me in terms of performance. I've seen videos of people repasting their CPUs and sometimes it feels like 5% or 10% or 20% wouldn't be all too much and maybe it's not worth it. But at the end of the day, now I have my results and we'll see if it was actually worth it. Now, before I talk about my test results and go into the process, I want to mention here that for me, this whole process, aside from ordering all the stuff and waiting for that, just the process itself of taking apart the computer, repasting and putting everything back together again, that basically was something like four hours-ish. And I don't know if that's worth it for you. It is an experiment for me, but I really had to think about it. And again, it's like four hours, five hours of your time. You need the proper tools, so you might have to get those. You have to get the paste for the repasting and whatever, maybe you have other things that you want to also replace, like for example, in my case, the speakers. So all in, including the tools and everything, you're probably going to spend around $80. I, for myself, I already have the tools, but the paste was like 10 bucks and the speakers were something like 30 bucks also. And of course, also the time, which you have to consider, because again, it's like four or five hours that you have to put into the whole process, at least 
to actually get all of this going again. And of course, also keep track of all the screws so you don't mess up anything there. Now, in terms of results, let's talk about those. And then, of course, we will jump into the process that I went through to actually get this done. And as you can see on the screen right now, in the Cinebench multi-thread or multi-core test, before I scored 3,762, after 4,448, which is a 18% increase. In the single core, it's 884, and then 999 in the percentage change, it's a 13% change. Geekbench multi-core, 3,330, and after it was 3,705, an 11% increase. Geekbench 980 to 988. 1% and the GPU was 16,850 changing to 16,855. Now all of these tests were done pretty much in the same room in almost the same climate. I have a thermometer right in front of me and it was always around 20, 21, 22 degrees. If anything, it was actually warmer later in the day when the after test was conducted. Now something I want to mention here in terms of what type of test is going on here and why you see such a strong change in the Geekbench Multi with 18% increase in speed and not so much with the Geekbench. And that has something to do with, or at least from what I am understanding, with the type of test these two systems are doing. The Geekbench and the Cinebench are fundamentally different. The Geekbench does a bunch of tests one after the other, and whenever they are done, you basically get just that score of how fast was that process. Now on the Cinebench, on the other hand, it's a slightly different process because you basically tell the whole system to test the performance of your computer over a certain amount of time. I set it to 10 minutes, and that means that it does a rendering of a certain scene of a 3D element for at least 10 minutes, and then it finishes that last run as well. And in that case, it is actually powering the CPU at 100% as much as it can possibly get so that it actually figures out how much is possible. And with that also, it is actually triggering the thermal throttle. It is trying to get the turbo boost, which is in this case a 4.1 gigahertz. And from there, I also saw it go lower and actually throttle there instead of actually going to the 3.1, which the inbuilt CPU of this computer is supposed to be clocked at. And now if we look at the videos of running these tests before I was doing the repaste and after doing the repaste, it is actually quite clear in the Intel Power Gadget, which you can also use if you have a Intel Mac, and I will link that in the description below as well. There, you can actually see the temperature, the voltage used, and the utilization of the CPU, and also the core clock speed at the moment, and the requested clock speed as well. Now before repasting the whole system, it actually showed that it was requesting the highest possible clock speed for much longer than it actually was possible to get it because it was throttling down immediately because the temperature basically hit 100 degrees Celsius and it just stayed there the whole time and it throttled down to an average speed of something like 2.8, 2.7 gigahertz. Now, if we look at the same result from after and there, we will actually notice that the throttling also happens but it did not request the highest possible speed for as long, and I'm not sure why exactly that happened, but once it started throttling because of the higher temperature and the fans going full speed, basically what we got was that it actually was using the 3.1 gigahertz, which this CPU is actually clocked at. Now, whether or not that's worth it for you to get about 20% more, or at least in my testing, 20% more in terms of the CPU speed, that is for you to decide if you want to go through that whole process. But if you are interested, I'm going to talk about my process, how it went for me, and what steps were necessary. But this here is not a full break apart guide. You will find a iFixit guide linked in the description below. And that was super helpful for me to get through the whole process without any issues and also without having to remember which screws go where by myself. Now, first of course, you have to undo the cover with the screws and the suction cup and prying it open. And once you have done that, it's basically just about removing all kinds of screws, little cables, undoing those, uh, removing the little clips that hold everything in place. And once you are done with all of that, then you can start undoing or taking out the motherboard completely. I then further went and basically did a bit of a cleanup with the dust to the side and of course also removing the speakers because I have to replace those since they are no longer working. 
Once I had all that done and the motherboard out, I started with also a little bit of a cleanup of the motherboard and then flipping it open and undoing the screws that are holding in place the spring that holds in place the CPU and GPU cooling mechanism. Then I went ahead and basically cleaned everything off a little bit with a plastic spatula first for the little bit of a hardened paste essentially. And then I went ahead and used a cotton swab to basically remove most of the residue of the old paste other people have said you have to use alcohol. I've read in articles that it's basically not necessary to do that. And with this, I'm apparently good with the result that I got. Then I also used a bit of a paper towel. And once I had everything nice and cleaned, I did a bit of more cleanup around the whole area and basically dusting everything off with a bit of a brush and a bit of an air blower. When I had everything cleaned like that, I essentially was ready to repaste and so I did put the paste back onto the two conducting elements where I saw the most as well. And with this being the first time that I ever used thermal conducting paste, of course I did not expect as much of this to come out. So I had to clean off the GPU a little bit, spread it up with the little spatula and then screwing on the little springs that hold in place the cooling components and of course doing a X pattern so that the screws are not unevenly tightened throughout the process. Once done, the rubbery things on the coolers also went back into place and then it was time to basically put everything back together. Of course, trying to not crush any cables or bend anything. Of course, trying to get everything back together as it was set up before. And with that, you just follow all the instructions basically in reverse order based on the guide that you were using. When I had everything back in place, it was time to place the speakers into the system, gluing them in place, closing off the whole laptop with the cover, and then turning it on for the first time. And that concludes my video about repasting the 2016-2017 MacBook Pro 15-inch with new thermal paste for better performance. Now, as I've mentioned in the beginning, it is up to you whether or not the amount of time in terms of like the four or five hours that it takes to do this process, and of course also all the tools that you require to do the process is worth it for you. That's up to you. I think personally, it was probably worth it for my work because I am doing so much high intensive work with CPU processes or GPU processes actually doing the rendering of these videos and such things. I think this was basically a interesting fun project to do this the first time ever for myself with this MacBook Pro to get to know the internals, see the motherboard from the other side and just learn something. Now with all that said, I hope this video was interesting for you. Give it a thumbs up if it was. Check out the resources in the description below. And of course, have an amazing day. Try to make your laptop faster by repasting the CPU and GPU. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.